what, what is the Andromeda paradox? Well, the Andromeda paradox is the fact that if you and I are looking at Andromeda, Andromeda the galaxy, the galaxy, two and a half million light years away, then what happens is, suppose you're sitting in your chair and I'm running by, and at the second I run by you, we both look up at Andromeda. Because I'm moving and you're stationary, we're going to see events that are days apart, even though we're in the same location looking at the same time. How can that and be? you think. How far away from me are you when you're running by? You're in the same place. We're in the same place, essentially. So I've you're never, like literally I've running. I've never here. heard of this paradox. And yeah, you look right, up. It's a little known paradox. And right? the thing yeah. that you see and I see are days apart. Days apart. Because of our physical perspective? Be well, that? here's what you would think. You would think the light is arriving right now. We should all be receiving this light, but that's not how it works. Motion changes the perception of time. And so we know about that in terms of the local universe. We call it relativity of simultaneity, right? You're moving, I'm not. You see events as simultaneous. I see them as happening one before the other, right? But then when you add the distance component in it, now we see very different times. So there could be a third person moving in the other direction seeing a different time. So, two observers next to each other, one moving and one stationary, both of them are going to see the Andromeda galaxy differently. Because simultaneity is relative, and those two observers see the galaxy in different times. So, that means if I put a large clock into the Andromeda galaxy, one observer would see maybe something like this, and the other something like this. Hmm? So, if there was an advanced civilization having a weapon capable of evaporating anything in the universe, and it shoot a blast towards the Earth at this time, then two million years later this blast will reach the Earth and evaporate your stationary friend. But just because you are running in the direction away from Andromeda, you see only this time. Days apart. And no blast. So you are safe as long as you keep running. But big condolences to those who were running in the opposite direction, because those people were evaporated even before your stationary friend. But maybe if you start running quicker, you might get some extra days of living. So hurry up! But don't even try to stop. Oh, but the planet beneath you was also stationary, so it's gone as well. So how can you continue running? It makes complete sense, right? That special relativity is really counterintuitive. And there is no wonder why so many people think it's complete nonsense if it's taught like this to the general public. Because what you heard from the initial clips is complete nonsense. And I don't blame Neil deGrasse Tyson for just sitting there and nodding to that nonsense. Because physics is really vast, and if you wanted to know everything about it, your head would just explode. I noticed that there is a perception in public that since you are a physicist, you should know everything about physics, because it's your job, right? No paradox or mystery can ever catch you off guard. But that is not true. We have a general understanding of most of the physical theories, but most physicists are truly just experts in one particular one, like black holes, gravitational waves, neutron stars, or condensed matter physics, and so on. But if you are going to talk about some peculiar result from quantum mechanics to someone who is studying gravitational waves, then you might easily fool them. So just because someone is physicist doesn't mean he is expert in every field of physics. And you might say, okay, but special relativity is a backbone of every modern physical theory, so every physicist should know it, right? But that is true, but it only applies to the math of it. It's important for you to know how to properly do a Lorentz transformations to some physical system or quantity. But you don't need to know about every single apparent paradoxes in special relativity. So I don't blame Neil, he didn't spot the mistake. Although he looks kind of confused. Even though you're, you're in the same, same time. place. Even though you're in the same place, yeah. But Hakim, which is the guy talking about the paradox, should probably know a little bit better before talking about it publicly. So, what is going on? Where is the problem with this narrative? Usually, when you have a problem like this, physicists solve it using Lorentz transformations. So, you define a coordinate system in which the stationary observer 
has time and space coordinate 0, 0. And then you can easily calculate the coordinates of the emission of light to be at minus L over C L. Then you simply use Lorentz transformations and you will find the coordinates of this event for moving observer. And you will find out that time coordinate is this, which is larger number. If the Andromeda galaxy is 2 million light years away and the runner is running at speed of 5 meters per second, then you would disagree about 12 days on when the emission of the light beam happened. And now we can look at the event of observing the light. Since it happened at 0, 0 for stationary observer, doing Lorentz transformations won't do anything. And for the running observer, therefore, it will happen at the same time. But that is misleading. Because what if you choose the event of emission as 0, 0 coordinate? then the event of absorption for stationary observer would have coordinates like this. And doing a Lorentz transformations for running observer would give you this. Now we can see that they disagree on the absorption time. Does it mean they see different things when they look at the Andromeda galaxy? I don't think it's very clear from Lorentz transformations and it can easily mislead you to wrong philosophical conclusions. To really understand what is going on, it's sometimes very useful to go back to the first principles. The whole special relativity is based on just two postulates, the principle of relativity and the light postulate. So now I'm going to tell you exactly what is going on in this scenario. You have the observer and Andromeda galaxy that are stationary relative to each other. The stationary observer measures the distance to be 2 million light years away. In the Andromeda galaxy, the light ray is emitted and it's moving with a speed of light towards the stationary observer. And when it reaches him, based on the knowledge of the speed of light and the distance, he concludes the light ray is 2 million years old. And obviously the ray will evaporate the whole Earth and everything. According to the principle of relativity, the physics is independent of the state of motion of the observers. So if the Earth is evaporated for one observer, then it's evaporated for all observers, including the running observer. And it's funny because in this clip... Well, here's what you would think. You would think the light is arriving right now. We should all be receiving this light. But that's not how it works. Motion changes the perception of time. It feels like you should feel stupid for thinking this way even though it's a pure example of a violation of one of the most fundamental principles of all of physics. And there were like two physicists and it didn't feel weird to them. It felt weird to the host in the middle though. And you would think that physicists are free of biases in physics, but that is completely wrong. We just have different biases we carry along. But in this case... No, that is your bias. That is your bias. That's so. That's so Galilean. But that's. A, but that's. A, that's so backwards. <laughs> right. Wow. Get, get, get I've never got. Assist. I've never gotten heckled from the left and the right <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> at the same that's time. Right. Yeah. How unfair. Anyway, let's continue. So the light beam hits the Earth, and therefore stationary and moving observer both have to agree that the light beam is there. Now they can start arguing about how old the light beam is. And now forget about the fact that the light beam evaporates both of them. The stationary observer has already calculated it for himself, but he can provide the informations about the measured distance to the moving observer. Now the moving observer can say he is stationary and the Andromeda galaxy is moving towards him according to first principle of relativity. The speed of light is independent of the state of motion of the emitting body according to second postulate. And therefore the light approaches him also with the speed of light c. A question. How far was the Andromeda galaxy when the light was emitted? Since it was moving towards him for 2 million years at the speed v, then it must have been at this distance at that time. And since the speed of light is c, then the time the light was traveling must be this number. 
So comparing this to the stationary observer, the moving observer concludes that the light beam is older. So if you plug the numbers in, you would arrive at 12 days time difference, if you were running 5 meters a second. Now you might be asking, I was running just for the last 10 minutes. How can I assume that the Andromeda galaxy was approaching me for 2 million years? And yeah, that is correct objection. Special relativity only deals with inertial frames. So if you just started running 10 minutes ago, special relativity doesn't care. It's just calculation. And now you can impress the public with this result. But how meaningful this result really is? We are living on Earth that we consider stationary relative to the Andromeda galaxy in this situation. And the result seems kinda weird. But in fact, we are not stationary relative to each other. Andromeda is really approaching us. So when we look at the Andromeda galaxy, we conclude a certain age for the light we see. But the observer that will be co-moving with the galaxy in the universe would conclude a different age. Who is more right? Special relativity doesn't give the answer for it. But you can define certain coordinate system to be the privileged one. It can be either that of Earth or that of co-moving observer. Special relativity gives you the freedom to pick whatever frame you want. But this is just about it. We see the same light coming from the Andromeda galaxy. We just disagree on the age of it. But for physicists, this intuition is not very important. The important thing is to know the Lorentz transformations and to use them properly. And therefore, it might happen that you might catch a physicist off guard with these paradoxes. They are humans after all. I wonder how many of you were paying enough attention in this video, because there is one inconsistency I made. So did you notice? I derived the time difference from Lorentz transformations to be this, but from the postulates to be this. There is a gamma factor missing here. But why? And when I was doing this video and the calculations, this result kinda surprised me as well. And this is exactly what I'm talking about. There is still something that can catch you off guard. And if this happened on some podcast, I would probably struggle to answer this right away. Physics takes time to properly think through. But anyway, what is going on? Why these two results disagree? And now it becomes much more complicated. You have to give a light clock to all observers. And you know, when you see the clock moving, it will show slower time due to light postulate. So in a frame of moving observer, the stationary clock is slower. So if the initial configuration is defined in such a way that both observers receive the light when they had zero on their clocks, then moving back to the time when the light beam was released, the stationary observer's clock would read minus 2 million. And when the light beam reaches him, it will show zero. But if this is true also for the moving observer, his clock have to show larger time when the stationary clock show minus 2 million according to time dilation factor, which is derived from the postulates. And that is the missing gamma factor in our equation. But this effect is very small for small velocities. And that's why we got very similar results. But you see that doing special relativity this way, just from the postulates, becomes very complicated very fast. But you only get to learn special relativity during one semester at university. And then you have to move on to the modern physics, which is much more complicated. So you can't blame physicists for not knowing every single paradox in special relativity. But if both of them were watching this video before, they would know better. Because I was talking about five most common misunderstandings of special relativity. And straight up, the number one is what we see versus what we know. We should sharply distinguish these two cases. So if you want to know more, watch the video. I see you there and thanks for watching.